Must have functions. There are 12 of them. We'll do the first six. I'll let you take a brain break, then we'll do the last six. You're welcome. Carter, where are your notes? Where are your paper for notes? Where is your paper for notes? All right, the first one, I'm, some of these I'm going to run through quicker than others. As we go through them, you will have seen a lot of these. Um, and we'll talk about some analysis. I'm not going to write down all that analysis. I'm going to assume um, that you can write them down. But if you need anything, let me know. Or if you don't know anything, I can write down. All right, the first one. How many did I say there were? Twelve. These are functions that you must know. These are parent functions that you have to know that you have to be able to transform, move, shift, shrink, left, right, up, down, reflect, all that good stuff. The first one is what we call the identity function. Don't put it all the way in there. Is that my pencil? No, no, no. Okay. This is really nothing more than a linear function. This is f of x equals x. What does that look like? It is a straight line, just like that. Oh, there's donuts and juice over there too, y'all. Forgot to tell you. Because if this is, if you need the T chart, negative one, if Y is, if Y equals X, then whatever you put in for Y, that's X's value. Zero, zero, one, one, and so on. Okay. What is, and this is what I was talking about, I'm not going to write all this down, but you need to know all of these um, necessary negative infinity to infinity. What about the range? Negative infinity to infinity. How about, is it continuous? Why? That's exactly right. You can draw it without picking your pencil up. Is it bounded? No. No, it's unbounded. Um, on what intervals is it increasing? Algebraically, the symmetry of a function. Uh, not good. <laughs> well, let's take a second. Whenever, all right, algebraic symmetry. If you have f of x, if you change every x to a negative x, okay. When you do that, if it simplifies down to exactly what you started with. That's even symmetry. For example, f of x is x squared. That's a parabola. We know that's even symmetry, right? 
if I do negative x in for x, what happens when you square a negative number? It becomes positive. This is x squared. It looks exactly the same as when I started. So it's even symmetry. I know y'all remember doing that last year. Odd symmetry is if you plug in a negative and everything has the opposite sign in it whenever you simplify it. Everything is opposite means it's odd. And then if neither one of those happens, then it's neither on symmetry. It doesn't show symmetry. So do you see why algebraically f of x equals x is an odd function? Because f of negative x is negative x. These are opposite. So it's odd. Odd and rotational are the same. Yeah, okay. Tell me when you're caught up. How about in behavior here, by the way, while we're waiting? As X approaches infinity. Infinity, you're exactly right. As X approaches infinity, F of X also approaches infinity. How about the other end? So as X approaches infinity means on the right hand side of the graph, is it going, I know I'm all caught up in, is it going up, down, or towards a number, up, so F of X, which is Y, is going up, positive infinity. There's one right here. But yeah, there's one under here too. Why? I have two. All right. Everybody good on the first function? We have 12 to get through, so we're going to have to move a little bit faster. Be very excited. I'm sorry. Number dose. quadratic function. What's that equation look like? There you go. Remember, these are all parent functions. All right, so when I graph this, One, one, negative one, one. This does not come down to a sharp V. That would be the absolute value that we'll do in a minute. But instead it curves up because it is in fact a what? It starts with a P. A parabola, that's right. A parabola, yes. What's the end behavior? The same on the left side, that's exactly right. Carter, what's the domain? How about the range? Inclusive, exclusive.
Significant points. What would you say is a significant? Why? Also called the vertex. Is it continuous? What did he say? Oh. Is it continuous? Why? Keep you got it. Keep, no, keep looking at me. Or, and so, how do you know it's continuous? What about the symmetry? Does it show symmetry? But you're you're just not saying it right. But you're right. What kind of symmetry is that? Even. It's even because why? Split it in half where? The y-axis. Very good. Very good. Algebraically, can you show that it has even symmetry? I bet you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Carter, can it? I just did. So you said it has even symmetry. Algebraically, how do I show? You plug in a negative x to show. And you see what that simplifies as. So, uh, ooh. What does that equal? Is that the same that I started with or the opposite that I started with? You were on such a roll. <laughs> the same, and because it's the same, that means I have even symmetry. Opposite, odd, same, even. All right, everybody good on that one? So just some of them will fly through and others will take us just a bit longer. I will, yeah. We'll get to plenty that are odd. But I'm a little OCD. I don't want to go out of order yet. No, he's not. Carter. I don't know it. I can't teach you. I told you if we get through six, we'll take a break and then we'll come back together. What's it look like? Is it? Who can you literally said this and did nothing. Uh -oh. Zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. All right, Carter, you ready? What's the domain? Oh, we, yeah, we forgot boundedness on the other one. Okay, y'all, clearly I failed. Yes, yes, so did I. <laughs> okay. Domain. Domain. Range. In, in the head, what? There's the vertex is there on zero. Why do you have to put a little half square? The bracket? Because it's included. It would have to be an open dot on it. Why can't you put negative one? Hmm. 
Because what about 4.1 or 4.8 or 4.82? Ah, okay. Um, what do you see in behavior? Nice. Huh? What's the top and what's the bottom one? Left and right. Oh, yeah. Continuous? Why? Uh, bounded. Yeah. Where? Below. Symmetry. Yeah. Even. Can you justify it algebraically? Yeah. If I put a negative x in there, the definition of absolute value says it can't be negative. So what's the point of putting that? So it's even. <laughs> That's what shows me that it's even symmetry. You have to write that? Yes. No, you have to write even. I'm just showing you why it works because y'all said I never showed you. Yes. Yes. That has a lot to do with it, yes. All right. Moving right along, number four. Not the only root we will do, but square root is the second root, yes. What does it look like? Zero, zero. One, one. Four, two. Remember, it is a parabola on its side. It's the one half of the parabola on its side. Shut up, Carter Ramp. If yours does not look like a half of a parabola on its side, it's not drawn correctly because it's the inverse of a parabola. What's the inverse operation of a power of 2? In other words, what cancels out an exponent of 2? A square root. Inverse, I'm explaining it to you now. Inverse means you switch x and y. So if you look at a, if you look at this and you switch x and y, and this becomes x and this becomes y, it looks like this. It's just missing its bottom part. Missing its bottom part because then it wouldn't be a function anymore, right? Why? If I included the bottom part, why would it not be a function? If my graph looked like that, why is that not a function anymore? If this were the graph, there you go, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. It would fail. All right. Domain. Bracket or parenthesis. Range. Same. That's right. Continuity. Yes. You can still draw it. It is continuous. You can still draw it without lifting your pencil. In behavior. X doesn't go to negative infinity, though, so, but it does get closer and closer to what? Zero. There you go. But your other end was correct. F of X goes. The graph will never go to negative infinity because it doesn't continue that way. Symmetry. 
I hear odd, and I hear no symmetry. No symmetry. No symmetry. Everybody good? Oh, bounded. Is it bounded? I'm sorry, I forgot. It's not? Below. It's bounded below. It's bounded below. Why is it bounded below? It says stop. I'm going to keep you from going any lower. <laughs> I think you're overthinking it. Does it have a maximum or minimum, an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum? It does have an absolute minimum. It has a point that it never, ever, ever goes below. So it's bounded below. If you put negative x in, that's imaginary. It doesn't look exactly like the first, and it doesn't look exactly opposite of the first, so it's neither. Number five. Imaginary. But after number six, I'm going to let you take a loop around if y'all can be quiet, take a break, and then come back and do this around the, not the school, the ups, right here. Number five. The cubic. The cubic. All right, this one. Zero, zero. One, one. Negative one, negative one. We've done all these. We haven't got any new ones yet. We're actually probably going to do 11. Not 12. Well, we'll do the 12th one, but. Domain. Uh, range. Continuity. Continuous. Um. Bounded, no, no bounded, unbounded, unbounded. Um, symmetry, what kind? Sure. Oh, odd. odd. Rotate 180 degrees, it looks the same. Or if you plug in the negative, what happens when you cube negative one? It's negative. So if you look, it was completely opposite from the first, so it's odd. Okay. What am I forgetting? In behavior. As x goes to infinity. Yes. How about the other end? Uh-huh. There you go. Easy so far? One more, we'll take a break, then we'll do the hard ones. Ready? The reciprocal function. You don't or do? Don't. 
I don't remember if we talked about this extensively in Algebra 2 or not. Okay, well, but we did talk about it a little bit um, getting ready for this test. Because it's a rational function. So my first question is, what about asymptotes? How about vertical first? So x equals 0. Where did y'all get that? How do you know? Bottom to 0 gives me those. That's right. I have an asymptote at 0. Bottom heavy, top heavy, same. Bottom heavy, right? So what's that mean? Y equals 0. This one looks like wings. One, one, um, two, a half, it does this. Here. And here. How about the domain? It breaks. Absolutely. How about the range? How does that work? Oh, never mind. That horizontal eyes and tires. All right, in behavior, I am now going to talk about yesterday, y'all were asking, yeah, but in behavior, I told you, just worry about the very furthest ends of the graph, and we were going to talk about some other in behavior whenever there's multiple pieces. Well, here we are, ready to talk about it. Yay. I'm going to describe this, 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 and this. So my in behavior here is going to have four parts to it. Okay, so let's start at the far left. As x approaches what? Negative infinity. F of x approaches 0. Does everybody see that? This is the end I'm looking at. As x approaches negative infinity, I'm getting closer and closer to this asymptote, which is 0. How about this one? As x approaches, what's x getting closer to? Zero. F of x, negative infinity. That's exactly right. That's the first piece. Does that confuse anybody? All right, okay. Now the second piece. Now, I need to stop and tell you something. I said as x approaches 0, but look on this side. <laughs> Making a funny face back there. So, isn't this also approaching 0? So here's... What if I did that? This means as I approach zero from the left. Because since it's not approaching the same thing on either side of it, I have to specify. That's the left side of zero. This side is going to be as x approaches 0 from the right. Minus means left. That's the negative sign. Come in from the negative side. Come in from the left. This is still getting into... Did, didn't we... We didn't touch limits, did we? Okay. 
We're setting up to touch limits is what we're doing. As x approaches zero from the right, what's the graph doing? Infinity. Uno mas. Let me finish this one. As x approaches infinity, what's f of x do? Zero. Only if it's different as you come in from the left or right do you do the plus or minus. Um, continuous? No. No. What's the type of discontinuity? Infinite. That's exactly right. Infinite. Symmetry. Because it has asymptotes. Infinite discontinuity has to do with the asymptotes. I hear no symmetry. Does anyone agree or disagree? It's odd. If you turn it 180 degrees, it looks exactly the same. It's odd symmetry. Let's take five. If you need to do a walk around, do not call. Okay, that was more than five minutes. Come sit your tail over here. This is why we don't always get along. Y'all stop laughing at him. That's what makes him keep behaving like that. All right, you did graph this last year. Is this my actual paper though? Horizontal asymptote at zero. We were doing a long time. Zero, one. It hugs the asymptote this way. It's an exponential growth. We got one more easy one after this, and then we get into the hard ones. E is that number, 2.71 something, something, something. It's an irrational number like pi. <laughs> What's the domain? You're doing, yeah, you're doing the range. Barter, bracket or parenthesis? Why? Why is it a parenthesis and not a bracket? What does it mean if you use a bracket? Okay, filled in circle. Does this ever touch the zero axis? No. There's not. If it touches that point. Well, the range, it can't touch zero, right? Because there's an asymptote there. So it's not going to cross over to zero. All right, well, okay, somebody else help me explain it a different way. Well, it doesn't If it hits whatever that lowest point is, if it hits it, it's a bracket. If it doesn't, it's a parenthesis. Yes. Yes. This is like saying x, or this is like saying y is greater than zero as opposed to y is greater than or equal to zero. Shh, guys. Right there, right there. That's a bracket. That's a bracket. All right, y'all, stop with the airplanes. How about in behavior? Air traffic control is down. Okay. As X approaches infinity, what does F of X do? It goes up. How about the left side? As X goes to negative infinity, it goes to zero. 
Is it continuous? Is it bounded? Yes, it's bounded below. It doesn't have a minimum this time, but it has that asymptote that doesn't let it go any further, so it bounds it. So why did you write that on the bottom? It is bounded below. Symmetry? None. Everybody okay? Okay. The log. What number am I on? Eight. I wish because this is uh, this is not my favorite lesson to do. <clears throat> log is the inverse of the e function, which means if you were to switch the x and the y axis, that's what it would look like. So if you think about it like that, natural log, the pin started to switch. L at x. It's an L. Natural log. <laughs> So if you think about the E function, just look back at number seven. If you make the X, Y, and the Y, X, I end up with a vertical asymptote at X equals zero. Because, oh, excuse me, it's the inverse of the E function. Ln x is really log base E of x. And it is the inverse of You didn't get to that in Algebra 2? Uh, I, 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 I we did the log properties. I do remember that. And we grabbed. All right. I have the point 1 zero because remember one of those log properties anytime this is zero it equals one because e to the first power is zero so one zero and i'm just gonna hug the asymptote this way draw my graph what yeah, that's just the point. Remember, right now we're just focusing on the parent graph. We'll go in depth with some of these harder ones, especially starting with the logs and stuff. Right now, I just want you to know the parent, okay? Um, how about domain? Yep, 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 yep. How about the range? Continuous? Yes, it is continuous. Bounded? No. How about in behavior? Okay. There you go. Does it show symmetry? No. Is it bounded? Did I already ask you that? What do we say? No. The natural log function.
Hmm, what to do, what to do. 